Welcome, welcome everybody, including especially our future select board members, all lined up presidents of the United States and others who are, you know, for about 25, 30 years from now. Okay. Um, so I'm, 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 actually, you know what, you're the chair, you call this to order. Um, also, just want to mention that there's a sign-in sheet going around, you can sign in, please. Uh, yes, I'm, I am the chair of the select board, so I am calling us to order, but I am not chairing this, this hearing. Mark is, so Mark, take okay. us away. Thank you, everybody, for coming, and in light of the uh, various ages, shall I say, of the people here, we will attempt not to make this too long tonight. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll tell you what, can I ask the select board, John, starting with you, would you just introduce yourself, please? John Brabant, Callis Select Board. Sharon Lynn, John Callis Select Board. Uh, I'm Joe McLean, I'm the town's attorney. Mark Mahali. Denise Wheeler. Rick Wheeler. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to call to order the select board hearing that we continued from June 11, when we were, many of you were here. Right. Uh, in order to receive evidence on whether to discontinue or designate as a trail, a portion of the Class 4 section of Town Highway 7. And any persons wishing to testify or present documents, I know I swore you in last time, but I'm going to swear you in again, okay? Um, and um, what we're going to do today is take oral testimony. If there's, we will first enter into the record anything anything since we met since we met that you, if if you Eleven. want if you want to talk and you have some documents to give us we can do both at the same time and we have we're just reminding you we have three options we can keep the right of way as a class four road we can discontinue the road or we can reclassify the right of way as a legal trail what we'll do today is take evidence that then, it's kind of a formal process here, then what we will do actually probably is continue the hearing to another date. I'll tell you what we're going to do that. It may be that you're all exhausted and you've said everything you want to say. That's fine. But we want to be able to think, oh my God, we didn't, we didn't get some piece of evidence that we need and be able to get it and put it up on the website. And then, we'll, finally, we will, in the, at a future date, but not very far from now, we will close the hearing, and then we will deliberate as a board in yes. private, and we'll announce, we will uh, give a written decision, right? Yes. Within, within 60 days of the close of the hearing. Within 60 days of the close of the hearing, we will give a written decision. And the standard is that our decision has to be within the, it has to reflect the public good necessity and convenience of the town. And that's what we gotta do. So, um, I think, I think what, oh, you wanna say something? No, no. I think what I'd like to do to start out of the, just as a matter of courtesy, I'd like any of the Schultzes who are very affected and not quite the petitioners in this case, but, but definitely the interested parties. If any of you would like to testify, raise your hand. Come on up. Come on up here and have a chair here, and I will ask you, I'll swear you in. Okay. Raise your right hand first. Do you swear or affirm that the evidence you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Great. Tell us your name. Gary Schultz. Gary, tell us where you live. 2209 West County Road. Okay, Gary, before you start, do you have any documents you want to give us that you haven't given us already? I have sent you two letters. Yeah. And I, they didn't show up on the website. I assume you've received them? Yeah, they don't show up on the website yet because I, re I have them here. Okay. To enter into the record. Once they're entered into the record, then we'll put them up on the website. Okay, Fine. so there's two letters, and you're putting them on the list. And yeah, there's one from July 13th, and then an email from April 15th. Okay. All right. 
I, I asked Josh, he's got, he printed them. He, he yeah, says tongue tongue. Yeah. Okay. I, let okay. the record reflect that he's tongue tongue okay. right here. Okay. Okay, so tell us what you want to tell us. Okay. Uh, I'll try to keep it short to the point. Um, TH7, as survey, in the town survey, is about a 1,300 foot road that goes from actually the middle of the dam on Duger Brook up at the road past our house. Um, it ends on our property. It does not extend past our property line. Um, the major issue with us is that ever since we've lived there, and that is the 70s, um, several times a year, somebody comes up the driveway at a high rate of speed, usually four-wheeler, dirt bike, or mud truck. It depends. We get some days, some years are busier than others. But with always a concern, but it's, it's especially a concern now because we got, how many grandkids, 100? Um, let me think, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, that are out there playing in the driveway. So it, for us, it's now a hazard. It's more than an inconvenience, it's a threat. So we're requesting that you throw it up. From what I've read, what I've heard, most people that are opposed to this assume that the road goes beyond the surveyed limits. My contention is no. It stops on our land. It's a dead end road. Part of it is our driveway. And uh, I don't think it's of any use to the town. And if anything, it's a hazard to my family. So that's it, short and sweet. Thank you. Any questions by the board of Gary? When I do. When you purchased the property, did you know that road was there? Um, I didn't purchase the property. <clears throat> it's been the family four generations. Um, never been posted. Um, so I inherited it, so I did not buy it knowing that a road was there. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Sharon. Uh, Mr. Schultz, you ref referred a couple of times to a survey. Is there a formal yes. certified survey of the property that includes the road? Yes, it's in the town records. <coughs> Recorded in the, t in the land records? Yes. Have we had that submitted as? I don't know if that's part of, of the record. I know Reed has supplied us with a lot of different <coughs> maps, but that's <laughs> different than a survey. There's a file that Marge Garfield put together, and she references the survey. Yes. Yeah, there's a But whole we do not have the survey in that package. Oh. Okay. Yeah, we should. We should Talents, know. Ancient yeah. roads team stuff. I think the ancient roads file stuff is in that Google folder. Yeah. So well, I don't think the check. survey is. Okay. Maybe it is in there. I'm not sure. Let, let me just ask. Maybe. And I forgot my file with all the stuff in it. Let me just ask quickly, Joe. Um, if is the survey, if it's in the town records, it's a matter of public record. Sure. Can yes. we do we matter need to what? do we need to in, Public record. Public record. Oh, yeah. So we can we can take notice of it, but can we put it in the record? If we close the hearing, can we just put it in the record? Point of information. Yeah. Uh, there is an original survey dated to I believe 1840. Um, it, it has some variance and distances in it. It's part of the Palace Ancient Roads team's work. It's in a file at the town clerk's office. The, the survey specifically says it goes from the property of Lawrence York, which was the abutter to Schultz's back in the day, and it goes to the county road. 
It has some variance of distances that may or may not make it between those two points. Could but you just tell us your name for the record? I'm sorry, Paul Hannah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it has, it refers specifically to those points, therefore it must go from point A to point okay. B. So we'll be continuing the hearing so we can we'll get that and put it in the record and it will go up on the website. Okay, and just Any to answer your question, my, I think it will be better practice to locate the survey if there's one in and then put it put in the record, record as yeah. part of the continued hearing yeah. rather than take notice of right. something that no one here yeah. would necessarily have a chance to see. So if we, when we find it, do we send it around to everybody? No, what we do, I think when you find it, you just put it up. On the, on the right. website? Yeah. Who is, okay. who is going to specifically do that? I'll make sure that we, if we can find it. I think it's probably in the packet of stuff that we have that I forgot to bring in the hard copy. There, there is a copy of it here. Paul has it. Oh, okay. Paul, do you have it here? You want to give it to us? Do you mind, Paul, do you mind relinquishing that copy? Uh, no, I've read it. You want me to? Oh, it's fine. Oh, oh boy, it's in that card. great handwriting. I, I think it's in the cart that Paul said. I think it's in the cart file. Did I put in the, Google, yes. the Google folder? And it should be online. Okay. okay. So we'll make sure, Denise, can I ask you, will you make sure that one way or another it's it's, it's inscribed in the book, so to speak? Yeah. So do I enter this now as a. Yeah, I would mark it. Okay. And then we'll. Enter it at the appropriate time. Any other I, I do here? have a question about yeah. that, and that is, does that does that verify the Paul? Do you know if it verifies that the existing property lines you know, where that starts and stops? Does that um, that the York? Again, I believe the Yorks were the predecessors to what we've been referring to as the car place, mm -hmm. and the county mm -hmm. road is the county road. Got to I'll, get I'll tell you what. Idea. Let's let's let him. If you, we want, if That's you want to ask him, let's let him testify. Yeah. Okay. I think it'll be It'll be hard to follow if it's too much cross yeah. out. Okay, Gary, is there anything I else just you want to have say? one thing. Paul, when you uh, you GPS that road for the Ancient Roads file, and you note on your report that it was a short survey. In other words, it didn't go to our property line. Um, that's part of the record to the, the card file. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll ask Paul to testify. Is there anything else, Gary, you want to say? No, I didn't quite understand where he was coming from, but I have never found any, rela any um, correlation between what the car farm and York's property. Thank you. Uh, anything else? Hey, thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else from this family who wish to testify, please come up. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that what you're about to say is uh, the evidence you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing and but and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Wouldn't it be easier to do? This is Josh Schultz too. Wouldn't it be easier to just do everything? Yeah. All right. And we talked to everybody last time, but I'm afraid you want to testify. I've been on advice of counsel. Okay. Um, so, tell us your name again. Uh, yeah, my name is Joshua Schultz. And you're living in the place of where you live? At 2957 Duger Brook Road. It's right across the road from Mom and Dad's property. Grew up in Mom and Dad's house. Um, so I've lived there for my whole life. So, um, so first off, the uh, with, I just wanted to testify. So, with regard, to, and I have submitted my 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 testimony in writing. I just had a couple things I thought I'd make just make mention too. But um, the the survey does mention it's uh, it's it's one thousand three hundred eighty six feet long. It's very clear in the survey where it starts, and that's down by the the old dam down to the Brook Road between actually where I live now and. Mom and Dad's house, and my house. Part of my house used to be the old, um, the, the old office for that old mill that used to be run by that dam. You mean the house you live in now? The house I live in now, yeah, on Duberbrook Road. And um, and it, it survey is is very clear about that point. 
And then it, it says that it goes up, um, it gives it in rods, but it's, it's 0.26 miles, 1,386 feet up, which um, terminates that road well within mom and dad's property boundary. I can't throw a rock and hit the other, hit the boundary um, with the, the current lumberjack folks that, that own that property abutting mom and dad's from where the survey um, point ends, that, that 1,386 feet ends. And I think during our, our walk, we, we saw that, but, um, the road uh, TH7 has been delineated as long as anybody's had a record, um, like in the town records, which I think they started about, I think in 1930s there's a, there a map, but really 1941 is the first one I could find in the archives where we, where we could start seeing like the town was submitting maps to AOT and it had to designate as untraveled UNT um, for, for years. And, um, and, and well over, probably, probably it's been untraveled for probably over 100 years. Um, when my dad used to, used to come up and play when he was a kid, my grandparents owned the property, he'd tell stories about walking through a creek bed to get to the property where they currently live. Um, and so that what house wasn't there, TH7 at that point, you had to walk through a creek bed, you couldn't even get up TH7, and dad tells me that you couldn't even tell there was a road there back then, and that was in the, in the 40s. Um, so even back then, a long time ago, um, it, it was not, this was not a road that was near and dear or loved by anybody in the town. Um, and I, I know that on the map it shows that there's a road there, um, but one thing what I, what, I, what I was wondering about was, okay, why is this map all of a sudden, why is it, you look at a current map, it shows 0.5 miles, but yet the survey is different. And so I, I looked into it, I called up AOT, and this is again in my, in my written testimony, but AOT first off told me, they're like, look, just because a road it shows up on a map doesn't mean anything. They said, it doesn't, it's, this is not a legal um, means of establishing a road. So like, okay, but I'm still confused what, how come that 0.5 miles suddenly shows up. And we looked at the archives and found in 1973 is when that first 0.5 mile delineation was given. And um, again, I asked them, do you know, like, is there anything in your records that shows where that came from? And they looked and um, all of a sudden they said, oh, I think we found it. And, and they looked at the, I think it was the, it was the 1973 listing that the state, uh, the town sent, sent the state. And in there it says for the first time it crosses off the, the, the previously for the 1941 to 1973, the UNT, the untraveled. And suddenly it says 0.5 miles, and it asks like how that was arrived at. It says scaled, and so what happened was a town official when AOT said, yeah, they they scaled it off the map. So they put a scale on a map, which is an engineering scale, you know, foot long. And they put it on the map, and they saw that it was 0.5 miles, and they just wrote 0.5 th7. So they didn't they didn't take the time. And back then in 1941, I'm not sure anybody did. I don't know, but they didn't take the time to look at the survey, cross-reference anything. They just wrote 0.5. So that was kind of a good mystery that was solved for me. And, and again, um, AOT, they did tell me, they said, that's not illegal. You know, scaling a road on a map is not a legal means of establishing a roadway in Vermont. And, and they said that. They said, you know, so I thought that was really good information. So it was kind of 0.5 miles versus the quarter mile survey. Um, I've noticed, like, with other folks that have written in and kind of, like, opposing the discontinuance, I've noticed um, some, a lot of them are kind of, are based on kind of a lot of, like, what-if scenarios and, um, you know, things like, you know, ecological disease or ecological, um, you know, rehabilitation or, or you know, uh, or restoration. And the road isn't, isn't a passable road, and it's, it hasn't been that way for over at least 80 years, but probably again, probably over 100 years. And um, you can't even walk on it. And I sort of like scratch my head a little bit at that and that, well, first of all, the road, the survey doesn't go beyond mom and dad's property. So that's the first, you know, kind of the folks that oppose are kind of thinking the road goes up beyond their property. But, um, but even, even with what it is, it's really not access, it's not accessible, this is not a good access to that land back there, and that's why nobody uses it. Um, people don't walk it, people don't ski it, uh, they just, it's just, it's not a, a pleasant stroll. Um, folks that do want to access that, they either access it from the Woodbury Mountain Road, or um, before it was posted, they'd come in from the Worcester side, the Callis Worcester Road. 
but um, it's just not a road that's been accessible over the years. In fact, I, I've racked my brain. I can count probably five people in my entire life, and, and probably not even that, honestly. And Dad um, doesn't recall anybody either over his many years. So I think it's safe to say that over 75 years, you have a very, very small handful of people that have even tried to venture up there. I mean, walking. Been walking it, yeah. And, and so it's, it's, not, it's not sounding like, like, a, like this road that's like loved by the town. In fact, most people, even the folks that rode in opposing it, hadn't even really walked on the road before they submitted their, their letters or, or, or their, you know, I'm, I know there's some, and they're all good people, by the way. Like, these are good town, these are my neighbors, and I have nothing against them in any way. But, but um, some of them did walk the road on, during the June 11th walk, and I think kind of saw, like, this is really washed out. I mean, it would take a very significant effort and a, probably a bulldozer and other things right through mom and dad's front yard um, to reestablish a roadway. And you can't even tell there was a road in certain places of mom and dad's yard that would have to get kind of demolished to get a travel way up there. Um, and then I'll, you go through wet areas, there's a brook going down the road now, so there's a lot of disturbance that would have to happen. And um, just you know, hyping, playing out these what if scenarios that folks have kind of laid out to the board. And um, it just kind of made me, made me sort of scratch my head about the realisticness of, of that. I mean, you know, and, and one thing I've learned over the years is that when I make decisions for my family, is that I can't reach out, like I, I want to establish, I want to leave a legacy for my family, but I've realized I can't reach out from the grave. I can only reach out so far, I'll say. And I have to make decisions for my family that serve us best in the here and now, it, you know, with an eye towards the future. But like, and it's it's really right now. I, I feel like looking at history, looking at current situations, this road has not been something that's been that's been near and dear to anybody's hearts in the town of Calus. Um, and even the folks that do hunt on it, I know Paul Hannon has asked permission to hunt on mom and dad's land, and dad says, sure, go up and hunt on it. And with the exception of the time he GPSed it, even Paul, I don't think, really spent a lot of time on TH7. I think it's just not a, it's not a very easy road to walk. And I can't put that in Paul's, I'm just using um, God bless him, his, his, you know, him because he was here talking. But um, other folks that have accessed their land to hunt don't use TH7 to do so. Um, and then I, uh, I, I guess I just, um, I, I know that, you know, during the ancient roads, process that was fairly recent, there was a pretty heavy sentiment across the town to, to discontinue a lot of roads that were ancient roads. And I believe that same sentiment exists today. It wasn't that long ago. And I, I, I believe the town um, has, has kind of voiced their opinion on, hey, you know, we, we, are, we want to stand with our landowners. And, um, and so I, I just, I think that that still exists today with folks and, um, and, and with, uh, with landowners and the, the people like us that are impacted, my kids that are impacted every, every day. And I guess I'll just, I, I just wanted to kind of close out, I guess, with this, is that is that um, I think if the, I know the board's not going to vote today, I, I know, but if, hypothetically speaking, the board voted today and discontinued TH7, I think 50 years from now, nobody is going to care, I, 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 except for the Schultzes. <laughs> um, I think that 10 years from now, nobody's going to care. I, I, I can tell you that tomorrow morning, if the board voted today, right now, to discontinue TH7, it was discontinued. I think tomorrow morning, I think pretty much most everybody, except for the Schultzes in this room, is probably going to wake up. They might give it a, a quick thought. They're going to drink their coffee, and they're going to move on with their lives. Um, certainly, nobody seems to show much love for TH7 now, except for the Schultzes um, and, and, and nuisance. ATVs and things like that, but um, which is in my written testimony and my dad's as well. But the people that will, if, if the board voted tomorrow morning, I can tell you one thing that's going to happen is that there's going to be four adults. I know Charlie and Jenny, my sister, myself and my wife, Kristen, we're going to wake up probably with tears in our eyes and it'll be tears of joy because for the first time, we can, our kids can be over there playing in that road and not have to worry about a mud truck or an ATV driving up and plowing over a kid because they, they might have been drinking. Or in the middle of the night when 
there's movie night at Grandma and Grandpa's, and the kids are over there, and they go to sleep, and at 2 o'clock in the morning, all of a sudden, there's headlights and loud noises in the driveway, and Dad's getting up, what's going on out there? And the kids are waking up crying, and that will, I, I believe, that will go away. And then for future generations of Schultzes as well, those kids, those future kids are going to be served. And um, I can tell you that also tomorrow morning, if this happened, mom and dad, grandparents are going to wake up with tears in their eyes also, with tears of joy, because they, we've been waiting a long time for this. Dad came to the select board, and, and I know there was a, it was a conversation. I don't think there was ever a, a formal petition, but it was a conversation that started. But it's since that time, I think in the 70s, I think it's in the town records, in the file. But since that time until now, nothing's happened. The town hasn't used it. Nobody's used it. And it's just time to clean this up. It's time to clean this road up, get it, get it off the map, and, and, and put, this, put this to bed. And, um, I, I know people have talked about assets, but I'll just say it. I think our most precious asset in the town are the assets of our children. And that's the town's future. And I can tell you that we're raising our kids and I hope that they want to stay in this town. We've got, there are 11 grandkids so far, 11 grandkids. And I think between 11 kids, we're gonna, it's a pretty safe bet there's gonna be some Schultzes in town for a while. And um, future generations, I mean. And they're, we're gonna live, they're gonna live on the family homestead, that property, that area that we've, that we've kind of carved out. And we're, we're good, I think, you know, speaking, I think we're good people in the town. We contribute, we help out, and we're asking the town to, to stand by us and help us just make this safer, just get this, get this cleaned up, please. And um, let us go to bed at night and not think about this anymore. Let our kids go out there and play on the driveway and their bikes and, not, and us not think about this stuff anymore. And that's, that's, my, that's my plea. And um, I, I thank you all for, for taking the time to listen to to me and my, my family. Thank you, Josh. Yeah. Uh, questions of Josh from members of the board? Josh, I have a, any questions? I have a quick one. You know, and it's, it's interesting after walking that road, and it's clearly, un, you know, we've got a roadway design work that's untenable as a, as a viable road. I'm amazed even a mud truck can get up there and it's short of a skitter, and that would be skirting the sides of that gully, I mean, do you, do people they, deviate off of that when they use it? Do they get, I mean, I can't imagine no, getting any of it. No, they don't. They can't. They turn around in mom and dad's driveway. And, That's and what I wanted to ask. The yeah. same thing is, yeah. on the one hand, you're telling us nobody comes, and on the other, mud trucks or <coughs> ATVs, like, <coughs> what do they do? They, they just see it on the map, and they go up, like, and they, and, and what they do is they say, oh, this is someone's driveway. And, and this is when they're, but they don't know that till they get, you can't see mom and dad's house from the road. So they don't know that, they just see a line on the map. And honestly, even if it was a trail, even if it was designated trail, they're gonna see that on the map and they're gonna be like, oh, I can get up that trail. And, and they're gonna pull into the, into the driveway thinking it's a, that, that's why we're asking for a full discontinuance, not a downgrade to a trail because they're still gonna see that dashed line on the map and, and, they, or, and they're gonna go up through there and, um, and then they realize, because if you guys, well, I know that the, the walk wasn't admissible as evidence, but I'll explain it. When you get up to their driveway, the road goes straight, but there is a grass mowed, right. manicured hill there. And they see that and they don't, I, I think they don't, they decide like, we are not going to go up and tear up this person's yard. And I think they, they may think it's a mistake. Most of the time they're turning around and peeling out of the driveway before we get a chance to go out and nicely and say, hi, can we help you? You know, they're on their way out. Josh, but it's still, it's a, you know. How often does this happen? Um, I, I, I can't give you a, a oh, in general. I, I know, I know last, so I know last fall it happened. Um, in fact, one of them broke down at the end too, and they were parked there for a while. We didn't, again, like, we're not anti-people. Like, we didn't call the police or anything. They, they broke down at the bottom and they parked their car. Um, I went down and just jotted down the license plate number just for my own good, just because I didn't, you know, there was a stranger. But I was up in the middle of the night because there were headlights coming down mom and dad's driveway, and my wife was nursing not this child, our other child that's home watching Lion King for the 728th time this month. <laughs> and, um, but I, in the middle of the night, I'm looking out with binoculars through the dark and trees because there are headlights and I could see people walking. They had just come off mom and dad's driveway, and I, we called mom and dad to make sure they were okay. You know, like, 
if someone is getting down your drive. Is this once a year, once a month? Three it's, or four times. Yeah, three or four times like a year. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Any other questions? John? Just, uh, I want to hear from Josh. Uh, I did venture out on the road twice. I went out with the Callis Trails Committee in the spring, and then as part of this process, I, I took the walk. Um, but I want to hear from you, Josh, um, in terms of what you uh, discussed regarding the survey length of road. You know, 80, it's 84 rods, 0.26 miles, according to the Callis Ancient Roads team file. Um, that entire length, let's say starting with the county road, how much of that is visible in the landscape? Is it the entire length visible? Are segments visible? Yeah, what so your, se your segments opinion? segments are, are visible. Um, if there, I, I will say this, if there was not a known road there, we didn't know there was a line on the map, I, and I was walking through the woods, and I saw the ravine that exists there as TH7, I would not know that that was a road. I would have looked at that if, I, if, if so if this was just a mountainside, and I, I would say, I would think that that was just a washed out gully from a brook that had come down. So now knowing that it's a road, people say, oh, there was a road here, it's washed out. The road's washed out because the washed out area is right there. So um, if the ravine is an indicator, I would say there's a significant portion that is not visible as a traveled road. Um, probably like as a percentage, probably like 60 to 70 percent. Um, there are certainly areas on mom, right by mom and dad's house that are clearly, you do not know there's a road there at all, completely invisible. There's a, it's a mowed lawn. It was, it was like that. Mom and dad bought the property. Dad just, you know, raked it and planted grass kind of thing, you know, and, um, but I will say this too, mom and dad's driveway closely resembles TH7 or is on the old alignment, but dad was telling me that it wasn't exactly on the alignment. And we don't know exactly where the road was, but dad said, he goes, you know, looking at kind of the area, dad's like, he thinks he remembers it probably kind of favored if he was guessing a little bit in a little bit, like towards the north, but he didn't really know. And you couldn't even really tell back then there was a road there. Dad said, he was like telling me, I'm, I'm telling from stories that dad's told me over the years, but that you couldn't really tell TH7 was there when they were building their house and even when he was a kid. So they built a driveway and um, had to put in a culvert. And right, that's in the record that he has to be able to bring in. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you very much, I, Josh. You're welcome. I have, I have the letters in writing, but it looks like you guys have them. Yeah, so. I have all of these the documents the, you sent. Yes, that's what, that's what this is. Yeah, so the July 14th letter. Um, yep. And this map. The map, yeah. And then all these other attachments. Thank you for telling me what UNT stands for. Yes, you're yeah. <laughs> very welcome. Untitled? Uh, Untraveled. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Yeah, yeah. pleasure. Okay. Does any other member of the Schultz family wish to testify at this point? Okay, who else would like to testify? Um, I guess there's some information that I need that involves asking people to testify. So Reed Charrington, could you come up and answer some questions for us? By way of explanation, Reed supplied some maps to us. The maps are in the record. I'm going to use this and then enter it. Oh, we can roll. Well, I wonder, I don't know, is this, is this different than... Uh, that's just a, a that's couple just, of oversized. But it's what you already, what I already used. Yeah, yeah, there are. Yeah, I think for purposes, what I'm going to do. <clears throat> what I was just going to suggest that you can ask the question, and then he can, mark, can mark up his copy or your copy, and that can be going to be. Great. Okay. Read. Can you see an extra copy of the read, read packet? There were five. You know what happened to the fifth? Or were there six? I don't know. I don't remember. Okay. Uh, it should it should be in the in with the exhibit. That's Joe S six, I guess. What okay. read sent is in with the exhibits. Okay. What I will do yeah, is make is. sure we'll make sure we get you a copy. Okay. You can get it right off the town website. 
Yeah, yeah, but, but it's nice that it's nice. It was yeah, but I mean, it, it'll print out on the paper right and it'll, it'll look exactly the same Please, as this. Do you swear that the testimony that you're about to give is the uh, truth, the whole truth, the whole truth? I do. So, which copy do you want to use? The one I have? You can use mine. The one I have for the record? Uh, actually, not a bad idea. Okay. Reed, what I want you to do is take this and I want you to mark on it. On each map, if you would. What does he need? What do you want? Just to a write? circle. Uh, actually, do we have a color pen yeah. here? Yeah. Use this red pen. Oh, yeah, that's good. If you would just make a small circle on each map around T except that's all for a point of information. And I, and then initial your little circle. Okay, make make a just make a little circle around T H seven on the map. Oh, where it is. Okay. Yeah, where it is. And while he's doing that, I'm just, by way of explanation to everybody in the audience, if this is a bit tedious. Uh, what I noticed when I looked at these maps is that on some of the early maps, for the life of me, I couldn't find the road. And so I just figured, since he supplied these maps, um, he's making this. And what we'll do, if any, I don't know, how are we going to make this available? Well, we can scan it. And we'll scan it. We'll scan it in color and post it on the website. We'll scan it in color and post it on the website. Do we have the ability to scan in color in the town offices? Yeah, or I can do it from home. I have a color. I do a question while we are doing that. Um, documents for the record from people that aren't here. At some point, do you want me to go over what yes. they are and who they're from? Yes. That's going to be hard to see on well, that. While he's doing he's that, Let's see. Paul, do you feel that, is there anything about the survey that you gave us that you need to tell us? Yeah, okay. Sure. Okay, I'll, then I'll have you come up too. Okay. I'll, I'll talk to you. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I don't want to twist your arm. No, no, no. Not bad. Kids are being so quiet. That's amazing. I know. Well, that's why we're moving right along. There's an end to that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when they've had enough, we'll know it. Did everybody sign in while we're doing this? So we have it for the minutes. And where did Just my initial everything? And where did my sign in sheet end up? Right here. Uh, I'll read okay, thanks, Lee. When you're done, go back and put your initials in your circle. Larry has a question. Is it appropriate for a member of the, of the public just to ask a question for clarification? Of a witness? Uh, I think so. Probably Gary or, or Josh. Um, and, and I apologize, but you may have explained this and I just missed it. Yeah. Okay. Um, but wait, wait, wait just a second. I'm sorry. It might be better to just, just for organizational purposes, if we can just finish with Reed and then take a question, I think it'll be better. Right, and that makes sense. That way we're clear about And then it'll be in the minutes. Right. Okay. 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 I, these all came off the 
Vermont Highway Department website, uh, with the exception of the first two, which are uh, Wallings 1858 map and Beers 1873 map. Those are standard references for um, privately published town maps. Uh, and uh, then I started, I, I didn't copy every map that was on file <laughs> of Callis Town Roads that was on file because those are annual things. But they, uh, as I understand it, they started doing this keeping town highway maps at the, in Montpelier in 1931. And uh, interestingly enough, that uh, the, uh, the road is shown at that time going all the way to the Worcester town line uh, with the mileage 1.1. Which map is that for you? It's, um, it's a town it? highway map. Dated, that's the one that you've dated, which one, 1831? 1931. Is, yeah. that, is that a Beers map or an official town highway No, map? I think it's an official town highway map. It's, it, it's, it's the only one they had dated 1931, and um, I knew that was the first year. And 1933, that's the same situation going all the way to the Worcester town line mileage 1.1 and there's a there's a aerial photograph of is that the, the 1942 one? the 1942 also have one I have one in my personal possession 1963 but it doesn't show nearly as much as this 1942 one um, and then the subsequent maps are just um, what does the aerial photograph show? It shows uh, that neighborhood going all the way over to Hawkins Pond, so near the, Wor uh, the Worcester Town line. Which is the Worcester Town line on here, Reed? Uh, you can't see it. It's invisible. Uh, the, the reason there's a visible line around um, um, Lumberjack LLC's property is that uh, my family used to own that and my father had put a pencil line on his boundary. So that's, that particular part is very clear because that's the, not an original part of the is map. The house, is the house shown on the left, slightly upper left of this thing? Is that the Where location of the current house? Where are you, Mark? And the current, the current house wasn't built yet. Yeah, uh, right. So what's this? Uh, I don't know. I couldn't have never been able to identify it. Yeah, okay. And then the line extending from it, is that what you think is the road? Yeah. And goes into the property, to yeah. the car, which is not wooded at that point. Right. Got it. Okay, thank and you. It, uh, Seems to stop just short of the house, and then the barn is behind the house. And when you say house, is that this? Where you you circled it here in red? Is this what is this? Say what well, did I circle the whole thing? Say this. Say what it is, so we know. We all know. Okay, I don't know. What it is? I don't know what it is. That's why I'm asking. You have this part here circled in red, and there's a a blob here. Yeah, that, that could well be the site of the Schultz house, but I don't know, I can't. can't tell. Okay, but the road is that line. Where's County Road on here? Yeah. This is County this is County Road right here. So what are you saying? Is this this road here is County Road. Right. Okay. Anything else? Uh, no, the other the other maps uh, just show changes over the years. They're just kind of somewhat a random sampling. Um, I, I don't know at what point. I don't think uh, they didn't have, seem to have a map on file for every year. They did not have. I don't think you had to do one every year. Yeah, and and uh, so uh, it, it skips around a bit after. 
uh, it, after it's short, shortened, um, you know, not going to the town, the Worcester town line. I think the I think what I've got here in 1933 is the, the last map I could find that showed the borough going all the way to the Worcester town line. On this Commission. Um, we've um, su made a submission uh, about this, but we still have it under consideration. Um, and if this was explained, Gary, you guys have talked about it, I missed it, I apologize to everybody. But I was just curious about the survey, Gary, that you first mentioned, and it's been talked about a lot. I didn't understand what kind, you know, when it was done, what was it done for, um, and is it going to, is it in the record, or will it be? That you did miss it, Paul. Hannon provided the survey to us, and I'm going to ask Paul to come up now and talk about it. Okay, so both Paul and you are talking about the same survey. Okay, yeah. okay. Thank I, think, you, I think my question should be answered. Paul, would you come up? Paul, you want to tell us your name, and I'll swear you. <coughs> my name is Paul Hannon. I live in South Dallas. It's warmer there. It's much warmer. Do you affirm that the evidence you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. You want to tell us about this survey, Paul? Um, or what you know? Do you need it? Sure. Yes, I do. Um, what I'd like to do, if it's OK, is to tell it in, in the context of what else I had to say. Please. Can I get to it? Sure. Go, right. So full disclosure. Um, I've spent a lot of time dealing with ancient roads. It's my profession, part of my profession. Um, I think I can I think I can say I've never I've never met a properly laid out town road that I wanted to see discontinued. So I have a bias. It's on the table. Yeah, right there. Um, I think they're public assets. I think, regardless of their condition, they are something that the town acquired over time often paid for in one form or another, either by forgiving. Anyway, the point is they're public assets, and it doesn't matter to me at all whether you can drive it now or not. Um, a little context for the town highway maps. Uh, Josh is absolutely correct. They have no legal standing per se whatsoever. They are an expression of what the town believed at the time the map was produced. They started in 1931, as someone else said. And the deal in 1931, prior to 1931, there was no state aid to town highways. No money flowed from the state. The town raised all its own money to take care of its roads. So four or five years after the flood of 27, the state said, we got a deal for you. We're going to give you some money. But you got to map these roads. And you've got to map the roads you're willing to maintain to, quote, pleasure car status. So at least, unless the select board was lying in 1931, at least as late as recently as 1931, in theory, somebody could drive a pleasure car up there. Uptown so, Highway 7? Uptown Highway 7. A lot has happened since 1931, and I don't, absolutely don't question. I have not been up there in recent memory. Uh, both Gary and Josh are right. I've hunted that land a lot. I've hunted the 
uh, Lumberjack LLC land, I've basically been all over it. So yes, I know in general what the condition of the road is, and it's not great. Um, but nonetheless, the, ten, the road was laid out in 1840. This is where the survey comes in. There are two ways that roads can be established in Vermont. One is by a proper layout and, and uh, opening by the select board, which I believe this document does. The other is something called dedication and acceptance. And there may not be a document as we're expecting or hoping to see like this one in the records, but it's possible somewhere in the records there's an explanation for how it went from 0.26 to 0.5. In other words, the town may have just done work on it. They may have put a culvert in, they may have hauled gravel, they may have, there may be a reason for it, but that, that doesn't, to me, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter vis-a-vis -vis where the road goes across Schultz's land and whether that section should be discontinued or not. The, the layout document has a series of bearings and distances, and, and the Schultzes have been focusing on that, and I understand that. And it's one of the harder things for a surveyor or a, 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 a new surveyor to get used to which I don't know if I mentioned, that is my profession. Uh, but it's very hard, uh, what I'm about to say, it's very hard for a lay person to, to, to accept. And that is a monument, call for a monument is more important than the distance or bearing stated in the document that's telling you to go from point A to point B. So, and the reason I say it's hard for sur young surveyors to accept that is that we're measurers. Gosh, we ought to be able to get that right, and it ought to be really important. But what's really more important is what is, the, what is the thing? What is the thing on the ground? And in this case, it's clearly telling you to go from Lorenzo York's land to the county road. So I have not done the research, but I believe Marge Garfield did, and she did this, this car, these, uh, work for the Ancient Roads team. And so regardless of what the distances and bearings say, the goal of the select board in 1840 was to get you from York's land to the county road. So I'm not the least bit troubled by some gap that you can or can't throw a baseball to, to cover. You're supposed to do what you're supposed to do. Where, where's Lorenzo York's land? Well, I see it in the Diva, where is it? Yeah, I believe that it's the Lumberjack LLC oh, and the so-called okay. car property that, that uh, uh, Reed used to own. So that, that part is not really material. As far as... Um, so, I have to interrupt you. Sure. I just want to repeat. I want to reflect back to make sure I understand. You're saying you as a surveyor believe that the most important thing to look for mm -hmm. is the beginning and end, the called out points, and what they are. Exactly. And that uh, there could be, for any number of reasons, you're saying that the distances demarked in the survey are correct or incorrect, but that we know and can identify the two called out points. That's what matters. Exactly. Okay. And we know that the Schultz property was not owned by Lorenzo York at that time. I don't know that at this point, but that's but those those properties have been in separate ownership. I'm I, I would have to look at my lot line overlay, but I think it might be a lot line, an original town lot line in there. So and then the issue the issue about so you have all these town highway maps coming forward from 1931. Again, they're just an expression of what the town believes they own, believes they have rights to. Um, what happened, the reason you saw some activity in 1973 is that that's, which I think uh, Josh referenced, sort of changed, went from UNT to class four, is that that's the first year that this whole classification system that we're also conversant in now existed. It didn't exist before that. The town highway maps prior to that have designations on them, untraveled being one, you know, different surfaces, but they didn't break them down into class two, three, four. That was going to be my question. Yeah. Those, that's what you're until, about. until 1973. So if you look, it doesn't matter what town, there are some dozens of towns. If you look back through the records, that's, that's when it happened. And there's often correspondence that explains that. So it's not surprising that, that there was a switch. There's something different happened in the 1973 map. Um, I, you know, I don't have a whole lot. I, I, I'm. St I live at the end of the dead end road. 
And I get people coming, driving up, rubbernecking all the time. More than three or four times a year at my place. But it is what it is. I mean, that's what, that's what, you know. I love living at the end of the dead end road. It's a through road. People, people, and I, just for the record, not for the record, but just to make a point, I spent three days at the town clerk's office before I bought my place, making real sure that it never went through. Now, I'm, I'm not your average person. I know about these things, and so I'm not suggesting everybody should have, should. Well, maybe they should. But I know my, my, my road ended one rod and eight links off the northwest corner of my house. So, I, I, I would say occasionally I get some bad behavior type drivers coming up, but I'm not convinced that bad behavior is, makes great public policy. Yes, you should deal with the bad behavior, but I don't think you should discontinue the road. I think you also, I know you've got a letter from the lumberjack folks, and I think as much as the Schultzes would like to see their land enhanced by not having this road, I think the lumberjack folks would you'd be doing a real disservice to them if you suddenly said, this other access to your road, to your property that you may or not be using now, is foreclosed against you. You can't use it anymore. Um, just to get into the weeds a little bit on the road law, there is a provision that says a properly discontinued road that served, it was the sole means of access to part or all of a person's property. That person maintains a private right to use that discontinued road. If that were to prevail, the, the, the uh, lumberjack folks could use it. I don't think it would prevail because of the type of access that the lumberjack property has, has from Woodbury Mountain and the type of terrain it is. I think when they say part or all of your land in the, in the law, it's anticipating someone with a big piece of property or a piece of property with a huge ravine in the middle or some ledges that you just can't get over and yet, oh look, over here there's a perfectly good discontinued road that would serve that part of the property. As I said, I've been all over that lumberjack land, and it's not bad. It's not topographically challenged. I don't know of any big ravines that would prevent, other than Town Highway 7. They, uh, they, they have access to their property. They have great access off the Woodbury Mountain Road. I, know, I was going to ask the same yeah. question. Yeah. To the entire parcel is what you're saying. Well, again, in a, in, in a legal sense, I think the answer to that is yes. I'm not a lawyer. Don't play one on TV. But nonetheless, I think I think in a legal sense, yes, and in, in a practical sense, yes, because of the terrain, because of the type of land it is. They don't. Abs it's not the sole means of access to part of their land. Well, we know from when Reed took us on the walk that he and his brothers used to bush hog around the park place, and they accessed it from the Woodbury route out the road. Because I asked that question. Uh -huh. I said, how did you get up here? And he said, oh, no, we came down from the very mountain. Is there any, Paul, anything else before I ask people for questions? No, I just, you know, again, I feel like I, I'm not going to refight the battle I lost 12 years ago. But I think, I think the mass discontinuance was a, was a, a bad decision. I think the, Callis, the, the team that was put together had their hearts in the right place, but they started from the premise of and these are not talking about roads that were invisible. The, the, the unidentified corridors that were mass discontinued were a total gotcha. In other words, you bought a piece of land, somebody like me goes and finds a road that goes through your dooryard, you never had a hint, you couldn't see it, you could no imagine, it wasn't on the town, town highway map, and it was a real gotcha situation. Knock, knock, here come the ATVs. That's not the situation here. After that batch got mass discontinued by the town, the next batch were ones that you could see and that there were layouts of, and they did have the legal documents, but they didn't appear on the town highway map. So the decision that the town made on a one-by-one -one basis was what are we gonna do with those roads? The team, again, I think well-intentioned, started with the position of if the landowner doesn't want it, we're not gonna recommend it. And I, Again, I think that was a bad policy decision because these are assets. They have potential for future use. They have potential for walking trails, hiking trails, biking trails, oh, and, and access to people's land. And I just think it's, I think foreclosing 
access to somebody's land is a bad thing. Um, Thank you. So, question. I just, I just went back and looked at that report, by the way. <laughs> so, yeah, I just want to um, make sure that I understand the, the final point that you were making, Paul. So, it's come up a couple of times, the, the, the history around ancient roads, or the, that's the Scorfield term for them, the unidentified roads. And your point is that how we thought about those that set of roads in 2012 ish is that's a whole other issue these are this road is on the map nobody's disputing it's been on on the map so it's not an ancient road doesn't really belong in that it, conversation it, am i putting words in your mouth no uh, you, if you are i appreciate it okay. that's that's exactly the point this uh, i heard gary or I, heard, I didn't hear an equivocal equivocal answer, a solid answer, but the road was there in 1970 or whenever Gary moved in. Um, Reed owned the land up above. He knew the road was there. The road's on the town highway map and there's a legal layout of it. It's a whole different situation than what we were dealing with back in 2012. Well, that's why we're here today. That's right. why we're here. Right. Thank you very part. much. Uh, I have one other read. No, thank you. I have one other request. Is there any representative of Lumberjack here? Okay. Is there anyone else who would like to testify? Yeah, yeah. Come back up. You're sworn in. Sit down. Is this rebuttal testimony? No, no, just real fast. Just because, um, well, first of all, just I know the question about Lumberjack and the access. They have accessed the land abutting mom and dad's property for forever. Everybody who's owned that property from Woodbury Mountain Road. So just to kind of get that on record historically. And then Paul, I think, kind of said that as far as he knew. But just to make sure from the Schultz's perspective, nobody has ever gone up to each to access that abutting property. Um, and it's been untraveled, designated as untraveled since 1941 when the record started, like, like Paul Hannon said. And, so even back in 1941, it was an untraveled road. It was unused. And that, that aligns with the stories my dad told me. And then the only other thing I just wanted to say is I have heard this a lot over the, because we've been to, I've been to a lot of meetings, planning commission meetings, um, conservation commission meetings, um, uh, ancient, uh, no, sorry, trails committee meetings of talking about this. And I hear it a lot where folks have said, I've heard it two or three times now anyway, where they're like, well, I live on a class four road that dead ends or doesn't dead end. And it's not a big deal. It's not a problem. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, but it's not, it, it's just, just to speak for our, our experience with our kids and our family, that's not our experience. Our experience is, is, is quite the opposite. So I just wanted to kind of let you guys, I don't know if I said that clearly. I probably did, but that's all. So. I thought it was very clear. Okay, okay, all right. That's all I had. Thanks, Josh. Is there okay. anyone, thank you, Josh. Is there anyone else? Who would like to testify? We will continue this. So, part we're continuing it just uh, to make double sure. Okay, just a second. Okay. We're going to continue this just to make double sure, so that if we need to put more material in the record, we can. Because just to say it, this is not like you know a lot of the legislation legislative things that we do day in and day out. We have to make a decision based on the record in front of us. We can't take anything else into account. We can't, you know, if somebody meets us in the parking lot and says, we can't do that. It's got to be in front of us. So that's why we're being so careful to make sure that whatever might be there is in front of us. Yes. Uh, Gary, did you want to say anything? Just one quick thing. Uh, there is apparently some concern that what I'm trying to do is limit access to our property. That's not the case. It's never been posted for generations and never will be as far as I'm concerned. But like Josh said, you can only reach out to the grave so far. But uh, if I wanted to now, and I wanted to limit access, I could post their property and I could fence off the survey portion 
of TH7. So what you would want the town to wind up with is a quarter mile dead end trip. And I have no desire to do that. And, but it just, I, it's within my rights to do it. But I, I don't want to limit access to our land. It's been wide open. That's it. I do have a question for either of you. Am I right? I just want to make sure I'm right. Is it your position that the fact of the road being on a map contributes to the number of people who come running in with ATVs or whatever? Yes. And if it was not on a map, you don't think people would pull into your driveways and do the same thing? Is no. that, that's your position, right? That's our position, and I can't tell you. You know, you know, guys I talk to, you know, well, where's the road? Show it here on the back. Yeah, thank you. We're road or a trail. Yeah, right. You know, a trail also shows, you know, so yeah. that way. There's no way to take it off the map now, though. Okay. Well, eventually. Uh, eventually. Anyway. The mutters look, they have maps. But Reed, Reed, would you stand up so we can hear? Yeah. And I just uh, wanted to confirm what you said. Uh, you'll, you'll still be taking written testimony? Yes. Okay. And We're still taking written testimony. testimony. There'll be some notice yeah. when that ends? Yes, what we'll do is we will, in a very noisy way, we will close the hearing. Okay? So what we're going to do is continue this to a date certain. When should we continue? Can, well, so how long is it going to take, I guess? Um, I, I had understood this was the last day, yeah, 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 yeah. and we, we, could, we noticed it, it as the last day of taking very evidence. Short. Well, well uh, hang on, though. That's what the notice is. What I understood is the biggest reason that we're leaving it open is because we, we were getting testimony or input, I'll say, as, you know, today, that we really haven't even had a chance to look at. And, and looking at the next step is for the board to have a chance to deliberate with all the information. And in that process, questions could emerge and we could discover that we have a different remember memory or a different interpretation or we're missing something. And so leaving ourselves room, I mean, doesn't mean people can't submit more, but leave, leaving ourselves room to actually request information and, yeah. right? That's, that's, that's what we're doing is so giving ourselves time so that we don't, so once we start deliberating, if we have questions, we don't want to have to reopen the hearing. So I guess my question is process. So we don't have to set a date certain to, for everybody to come back, but we need to pick a date for the board to meet, to deliberate. If we have additional questions, right. we could then notice. No. no. I think we're going to set a date certain. And if there's nothing more to say when that date certain arrives, you'll close the hearing. And, and if we don't have any questions. And if there's no questions. Right. If there are questions. In the meantime, are we going to deliberate in the yes. meantime? Yes. We can. We can. We can. We can. Okay, that's my question. So we can we need to sure. kind of deliberate. If we kind of need additional information, then you we would you, we would re-notice that we need this information and have a another continued public hearing. You may do that. It may be the board itself that puts evidence in the record. You may find that you need a map or you need some other piece of information that's germane to the question. And so it may be that it's not anyone who's participating today, but the board itself recognizes like, oh, we need that state, the current state highway map to reference. Nobody's put it in the record. Let's make sure it's in the record. Mm -hmm. So the board can put it in. So this just gives you one last opportunity to put into the record anything the board might need and anything else that anyone else might have for your consideration. And when that's done, you can ask, does anyone else have anything else they'd like to testify about or the exhibits? If the answer is no, the hearing is closed. If the answer is yes, you take it. So, so um, Paul Hannon made reference to what I think characterized as an unfortunate decision um, to mass discontinue. What they call them, invisible? Unidentified, unidentified quote. And just so you know, that was, for your education, Joe, Joseph, um, 
That was done by a vote of the town's folks. We, the select board, said we're not going to, we could have made the decision, but we put it to the vote of the town, and it was a two to one vote to mass discontinue. That's all water over the dam, but what I'm interested in is what is the resulting effect of, what is an on a, for this committee's review um, and consideration, what is an unidentified corridor in terms of the law at that time and now, and the case law maybe if that applies, and what is the effect of that vote of the town folks um, on this? So let's not need to be. So that, that's 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 something. Let, let's just that be clear I, about one yeah. thing. And I think Paul said this. This case has nothing to do with unidentified corridors. This is an identified corridor. It's been there identified is. for a long time. Okay. And so none of that statutory language regarding unidentified corridors, the debate that happened previously in town, it's irrelevant to the discussion we're so, having. So so if there's a, a segment of the road that was not identifiable at the time of that vote, despite being on the map. See, my understanding is... Well, let's talk about it. Yeah, we'll see, it's right. I, 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 that's why I want clarification. Let's talk about that. So that, that might okay. be, yeah. yeah. I would like to, the I point... Can you, I can quote you chapter and verse on what you like, what you like, what you like. So should we... Could Paul I mean, come up here? No, no, I think, I don't, it's, it's I don't think. Let's talk internally. Okay. If it turns out that's well, relevant, then we'll have them come back. Well, also, we are leaving the record open for further written submissions. Yeah, right. Right, so um, I was going to ask so I think have some written comments on this 1840 survey that he was explaining. Okay. I'll tell you one thing. One thing at a time. Could we pick a day? Yeah, let's pick. A Monday is probably when the board is used to meeting. I don't have my calendar. And I didn't. I forgot my other file, so I don't have a calendar in front of me. But let's just pick a, you know, it could be not too far from now, but, you know. We like would, we would regularly be meeting. Um, we have a regular meeting on a week from tonight on the 25th. And we have regular meetings on the 8th and the 22nd of August. Therefore, the 1st or the 15th is available as not a, not, not a, a regular meeting. Why don't we say the 15th? August 15th? I will not be here. We want to do it when you're here. It's going to be September. Okay. What about August 1st? Oh, that's fine. Okay. Can we do uh, August 1st? I think I will. Okay. So uh, Monday, August 1st? Okay. Now, here at 7? Yeah. yeah. But what I think we'd like to do is this is a practical matter. I don't want, first of all, there's no need to, for anybody to repeat what they've already said. It's on the record, it's been recorded, we actually heard it, and might even remember it, I think. Um, I think the more important thing is, it could be that August 1 will just be a formality. That is, we will have added one or two documents to the record, it's right there, you know, and you can see it, what we've added, and we don't need more testimony, in which case, all that's going to happen on August 1 is we're just going to move to close the record, and that's the end of it. Hang on, though. When do we actually deliberate to discover whether we have questions? Yeah. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Or we may have questions and want testimony, and we'll try to notify people so that you can not bother to come if it's a formality, or you can come if it's real. Now, that's my problem is August 1. Is it too soon? Because it does not allow us time to deliver. So, so well, but we could deliberate on August first. Then it's a private. That's in private, right? Right. That's so, that's so we have August first pick. It'll either be deliberations, or it'll be deliberations and more testimony. And my question but is, we won't know until after. So, we can go to September. There's no rush here. Folks. Well, so yeah. So, so uh, to me, this is our process, guys. <laughs> Clearly, we need a time where we are just going to meet just us, and we're not inviting the public because that's where we, we surface what are our questions, what are our issues, and then I guess we have to convene a formal hearing to ask, or can we just outreach to somebody who would have the information we're looking for and ask, ask for the information or ask for a question to be answered, which becomes 
part of the record as something select board submits? We can do that. As well. But if it's in writing, we can do it and it goes up on the... Well, that's part of my question, is the process. If we get something, if we meet on August 1st and we deliberate, which I would be in favor of, and in between, or any, if somebody submits something tonight, after tonight, all the other documents that we've gotten in between the first hearing and this, more considered part of the public record because we had them set their public record. Do they automatically become part of the public record if Paul sends an email explaining what he means about the 1840 survey? I think anything that comes in in the interim should be put in after we can be hearing. That will be one of the administrative things that we do. Well, let's, let's wait till September. This is we're shoehorning it in end of the summer. Everyone's on vacation. You know, people might not want to witness. I, I think that's fair. You know, we're we're we are you know we're bumping up against John's vacation. I'm texting my family to say, are we going to be back on the first? I was wondering. If we if. Um, that's fine. If we just push it into September, September that's fine. I don't care. then we are giving, and the board has, you know, we have, I'm also remembering the list of things this long that we're also the trying board. to shoehorn in when we're not, we're, tonight we're focused on this, but other nights we're focused on 15 other things. 15 other things we're trying to get done too. So I, that's fine. I think if we can all take a breath and say, you know what, this is so great. <laughs> we can deliberate in September. Ask our questions of let our questions surface. Make sure we have the answers. Open one final hear ye, hear ye all come before we close the record. Right? That's generally the process. But I thought we were gonna have it so that when we met to deliberate, as we're talking amongst ourselves, we might come up with questions. We so, might. Exactly. so we wanna make sure we leave it. Oh, and exactly. exactly. Yeah. That's why yeah, we're, we're on the same page. Yeah. So, so, what, the so what's page. the first Monday that we don't have a regular select board meeting in September? Well, Labor Day, which would we don't be, want to do it then. We don't. So then we have a meeting on the 12th. The first Monday that we do not have a meeting in September is Monday the 19th. Okay. So we want to do continue. We're going to meet as a board on that night on that at night. 7 p.m. here. And then we'll deliberate. I'm just saying this so people like understand. Everybody can hear. Everybody can hear. The board will meet, deliberate. If after we deliberate, we decide we have anything else that we need from the public, then we'll announce a continued hearing date. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. So I want to give an example. All right. Let's say we meet on September 19th and we talk it through and we, we decide. And that, by the way, my giving this example doesn't mean there's any truth to it. Well, no, you can't be. Let's say we decide Paul Hannon said some really interesting things, but he admitted he's biased. <laughs> so we need to hire someone who is a surveyor to be our, a witness who's a neutral witness and come and do a study and tell us the same thing Paul Hammond told us, but uh, tell not us, biased. but not biased. Let's say we did that. And let's say we decided it was worth spending the money to do that. Okay. If we do that, then we'll, you'll all know, we'll, we would have them come, and if they did a written report, it would go in the record, and we would probably give you all a chance to respond to that. We will not allow some significant piece of evidence to come in and kind of blindside you guys and not have a chance to address them. So we're, that's why we're taking our time. We'll continue. If on the other hand, we deliberate, <coughs> no, we don't, we have everything. Maybe we haven't made up our minds, but we don't need anything more. We'll let you know. We'll, we'll come out of executive session and we'll just close the hearing. No. no, not procedurally. Oh, we're not going to be in executive session. We're going to be deliberating. No, we would come out. Of deliberations. Right, but have you warned that? Oh, we would have to warn it. Okay, have to warn it. one way or another, you'll know yeah. what we're going to do. Right. So we've set that date. And I, you had a question. I do. I have one comment. Yeah. I'm Charlie Flower. I'm the son of five. 
Uh, my family you guys get sworn in. And have yeah, do you want to testify? Sure. Well, it's just more of a rebuttal comment. Mr. Okay, Pan, well, in that Mr. case, do you promise that your testimony will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And your name for the... Charles Flower. <laughs> I wanted to, to comment on, on something Mr. Hannon said because he's, he's up here admittedly extremely biased, which I applaud him for admitting that. Um, but also as a quasi-professional testimony, as a licensed surveyor, as a licensed surveyor providing some sort of a form of quasi-professional testimony, and I heard one comment as a professional person myself, many years in engineering working with surveyors and for surveyors myself. I heard him and I heard him comment, and I heard a member of the board um, confirm that that's what he said. He, he said that he's willing to cast aside, in not so many, not so many words, cast aside bearings and distances that he sees on plans and surveys for what he sees on the ground. And I, I wanted to comment that that is far from what you would, um, certainly not a universal comment you're gonna find from other licensed surveyors. Matter of fact, I'm sure the licensing board might be happy to hear, hear that come out of your mouth. So I wanted to bring that up so, to make sure that the board isn't taking his testimony in this sort of professional light as though it's okay to cast aside the, the survey accepted by the town and in, in, uh, in, 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 uh, in instead judge the length of that road based on what we can see. I do um, want to just clarify that Mr. Okay. Hannon didn't say mm -hmm. that he would cast aside what's in the survey in order to um, just trust what's on the ground. What he said is that the beginning and end points in the survey. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I, 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 I heard that, that comment as well, but he also said that um, for what he sees on the ground can be uh, just as important as what he sees on a survey, which from my experience. He said the monuments, the monuments that mm -hmm. are noted in the survey, which are what's on the ground are are the, the anchors maybe? That's not a word he used, so I might not mm -hmm. be understanding correctly. Um, I did not, I agree with Mark, I did not, we, none of it, I did not take it that he was saying you disregard the survey for what you can see out there. You use the survey's guidance on what you will find as monuments to inform, and they are, they are more important than the distances. And he gave us a specific example of that. Mm -hmm. The distance isn't a survey. Are you a licensed surveyor? No, no. Okay. No. Well, listen, thank you for your. Thank you. I just wanted to be clear. I appreciate it. Okay. Take care.